while back, namely 2014, BMW introduced something slightly insane to the US market, a small electric vehicle that looked like a concept car. The tiny i3 looked the part of a futuristic EV with its polarizing design. Fast forward to 2022 and it turns out that most people want a regular looking car that just happens to be an EV. And that's where we get the BMW i4 M50, except that looks can be deceiving. It's based on the gas-powered 4 Series. Well, actually it uses all the design and interior of the 4 Series, and if someone didn't tell you differently, you'd assume there was a gas engine under the hood. But it's electric, and it's the first electric BMW to get this. The M Badge, the symbol of BMW Motorsports for 50 years. Does the BMW i4 M50 deserve this letter of the alphabet? Actually, it does. It really, really does. It'll do 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds and has a top speed of 140 miles an hour. And of course, you can do things like this. Engineers at BMW should be very proud of themselves. The weird thing is, is that going from a standstill to highway speeds in under 4 seconds, well, that's no longer impressive. Thanks to EV torque, really any automaker can do that. What truly makes this an M is handling, and that's where things get difficult. Because of the battery, it weighs nearly 850 pounds more than the regular all-wheel drive 4 series, and most of that weight comes from the battery. One of the pros of a battery pack is that it lowers the vehicle's center of gravity. That way, when you're going around a corner, you're less likely to tip over. Not that this vehicle would just tip over going around a corner, but that lower center of gravity means that it is more planted to the asphalt. But that weight of the battery also does something else. It's called inertia, and what it does is then when you want to turn the vehicle, the extra weight of that battery makes the vehicle want to continue to go forward. It's something all automakers have to deal with with EVs. How BMW saw this on the N50 is with adaptive suspension. If you are driving and you're on a rough road like I am now, you can leave it in comfort mode. You have a nice, comfortable ride, or you can stick it in sport mode to sort of tighten it up. The great part about that is that each individual shock is controlled electronically. So as I'm driving, every time I hit a bump, uh, the shocks are adjusting themselves. The vehicle takes note of speed, steering angle, longitudinal and lateral acceleration, and a bunch of other things within milliseconds in order to deliver the optimal driving situation with the suspension by adjusting the shocks. So that's how it handles the road, but there's also another place where the battery helps, and that is in the rigidity of the chassis. If you have a performance vehicle and the chassis is not rigid, what happens is you have all this sway while you're going around corners. You don't want that. Fortunately, the battery helps with that. The i4, like other EVs, actually integrates the battery pack into the structure of the vehicle, and that, along with things like this strut brace that goes from one strut tower to the other, actually increases the rigidity of the vehicle. All that speed and ability to turn requires a solid braking system. Without good brakes, you're essentially limiting a vehicle's potential because you never really want to drive beyond the capability of your brakes. Like every other automaker, BMW uses regenerative braking on its EVs. What's different though is that while other EV systems are well, their braking can be a little odd because you're trying to mix regenerative braking and friction braking and sometimes that, well, it doesn't quite mesh as well as it should. With BMW system, and you still get regenerative braking, you still get power going back to the battery. When you stomp on the brake, it feels like a nice lateral system. You just, there's no weirdness, there's no stuttering or anything. So you end up with a system that you can rely on. So it's quick, it handles great, and it's essentially a brick house of rigidity. So yes, yes it is an M car, but it's not the kind of M car that you only pull out on the weekends to hit the mountain passes. These dampeners help it hug the road, but they also make it a really nice grand tour. In comfort mode, I drove about 500 miles this weekend around California, and it helps smooth out the perpetually under construction California roads, but if I really wanted to, I could throw it into sport mode and still tear up a mountain pass. The interior and its materials are textbook BMW. Classy, but not so much that you feel like you're not allowed to relax. The seats are comfortable, but the four doors rear occupants either need to be someone shorter than me up front, or they need to be toddlers. 
Instead of a traditional trunk, the i4 actually has a hatchback, which is a cargo hauling win because you have so much more space in order to put things in and take things out. With a traditional trunk, you'd only have like this much of an opening. It kind of pops up and it's really kind of a pain. With this, it's way easier to get your suitcases or whatnot inside the back of your car. During my road trip, I put the battery pack to the test. The vehicle BMW sent me has the larger 20 inch wheels. Larger wheels means less range. So it has a range of 227 miles according to the EPA. In my test though, I got 238 miles of range, which is pretty good from the 81.5 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. The vehicle's gross capacity is 83.9 kilowatt hours. And during my drive, my efficiency rating was 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Not great, but also this is an M car and fast cars don't traditionally make for efficient cars. BMW is using a 400 volt system, but it is getting the most out of it. The i4 supports DC fast charging up to 200 kilowatts, and the automaker says that it'll go from 10 to 80% in about 31 minutes. Handling the interior technology is BMW's latest version of its infotainment system. It's easier to navigate than the last system and it uses a better than average voice assistant. BMW and other automakers really need to take a page out of Tesla's book and offer up robust charging station information along a route. For example, if I want to drive from here to New York, if I were in a Tesla, it would tell me everywhere I should stop and for how long I should stop. With this and with other automakers, it doesn't give you that. So what it does do when you decide that you want to go to a trip to, again, New York, is that it doesn't show you all the places where you can charge, it just shows you the first place you could charge. So you set that and then you get on the road again and it says, hey, you don't have enough charge to get there, so you have to find another charge place and you hit that. Like there's one, one charging station. <laughs> Still, the driver assistance system works well and I really enjoy BMW's traffic assistance system, which allows you to go hands-free. That means I get to take my hands off the wheel when I'm stuck in gridlock on a highway at speeds under 40 miles an hour. But uh, an important reminder, there are no self-driving cars you can purchase right now in the United States. This is not a self-driving car. Tesla's not a self-driving car. No one has a self-driving car. I still have to pay attention even though my hands are off the wheel. You throw all that together with its $70,000 starting price and the BMW i4 M50 is actually more than just a very capable M car. Sure, that's what gets you in the seat, the ability to have M performance without spewing CO2 in the air, but it's more. The BMW i4 M50 is a powerful sedan that's ready to tackle all the crazy roads near your house and beyond. What BMW has done with the suspension and with the rigidity of the vehicle in order to combat the heft of the battery pack is impressive. That said, it's still a no compromise daily driver that'll just happen to do zero to 60 in under four seconds. For more automotive coverage next to a large body of water, be sure to subscribe to Engadget. <laughs>